praising him. It's all right. Amen. And at this time, we would like to take time to acknowledge all of our guests. If you have any guests on this morning, we will ask if you will please stand. All guests. Amen. Amen. We just lift our hands in the sanctuary. God, we've got so much to be thankful for. And just tell the Lord, thank you. God, I thank you. For those who are watching online, there's, there's a sweet atmosphere in this house. And you might can't hear what's going on, but God is moving all through this place. And if you let him, he'll move to your place too. Yeesh. Yeah. I come to make an announcement, but Pastor, before I get to this announcement, I'm so, um, I'm so happy in my spirit. You know, when we see the saints come home after being on the battlefield. We see wounded soldiers. And some will say there's a, Sister Roxanne, some will say that that's a bad thing, but it's a beautiful thing when they can go through the storm and say, I still got the faith. I, I still, I'm still going to lift my hands even though my hands might hurt. I'm still going to praise God even though my body don't feel like it. I'm still going to worship you even though I've gone through some pains and some hurts. But God, I'm still here. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, but God, I'm still here. Yeah. There's nothing that can take my praise away. If you got a praise on your lips, I dare you just to open up your mouth and tell the Lord one more time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He, yeah, God. We still here. Mm. You can't take my praise. We still here. I'm still going to worship my God. We still here. Through the sticky storm, storm, we still here. God, we give you all, yes, God, the praise. Might have had to cry a few times, but I'm still here. May had a may had a moan in my spirit a few times, but but first lady, I'm still here. I'm still here. 
And God, I thank you for everything that you've done. I know pastor might talk about it, so I definitely don't want to step on the spirit, but I'm so glad to see some of the saints home on today. Mother Shaw, Sister Connor, if you're watching, the prayer line works. Yes, God. Sister Tina, your prayer, the prayer, the prayer still works. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous availeth much. The prayer still works. Yes, God. I didn't come up here for all of that, Sister Monica. I did, I did, not, I did not come up here for all of that. But when the Holy Spirit, it, it's hard to just... It's, it's, it's hard to just move on, amen? We, we have, um, we, let, me, let me move backwards. We have Easter coming up, amen, Resurrection Sunday. That is coming up in two weeks. We will be changing the service time to 1030. Everybody mark that to 1030 just for that one Sunday. We will be changing that time to 1030. And at 1030, <clears throat> we will have our youth will be um, in a session during that 1030 moment. Amen. So can you come and join our, our youth department? We haven't done much this year. We got a lot to do for the rest of the year. But can you join us at 1030 on next sun, on two Sundays from now? That is going to be April the 17th on that um, Sunday. And then two days before that, the 15th and 16th, uh, we are working on a musical um, that I would love our church family to come out to. It is definitely featuring some wonderful people in this church. Amen. I thank God it is featuring um, Brother Sam will be in the in the musical. Amen. Amen. Brother Smith will be in the musical. Brother Cordon is in the musical. Sister Toya is in the musical. My own wife and eh, and eh, eh. And, and the one and only Pastor Deacon Jr., Brother Harold Johnson III, Lee J. It's, he hates it when I do that, but he knows I love him. Amen. Well, I guess we do have the video, and then after that, we'll be in the hands of the pastor. Amen. Kansas City, get ready for the hit musical of the year. MSTC Productions presents The Twelve Musical, The Story of Jesus. A Broadway-style musical filled with dancing, singing, technology, and acting wrapped up with the Holy Ghost. It's the musical you don't want to miss. This musical will feature some of Kansas City's best singers and actors. Featuring Michael Andrews, Willis Blanc, Mr. and Mrs. Cordon Bowling, Joe Drew, Marlon Cortez, Derek Eichert, Harold Johnson, Jeremiah McClooney, Tim Robinson, Angela Sims, Lysandra Sims, Dr. Ryan Smith, Debbie Ann Starks, John Mark Tolbert, Adrian Wilson, and many, many more. Coming back home, it's special guest musical director Aaron Mayfield, April 15th and 16th at the Mount Carmel Church of God in Christ. But wait, there's more. This show is absolutely free, but you must reserve your tickets now. Go to www.thexiimusical.com. That's www.thexiimusical.com to reserve your free seats right now. It's the musical, the 12, the story of Jesus. Don't miss it. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. He's certainly worthy to be praised. We thank God for uh, all the spirit of the Lord that is in this place today. Amen. It's a sweet, sweet spirit. Amen. And we thank God for being in a place where you can feel and know that God is present. Amen. Uh, that he has not left us. He is ever present with us. Oftentimes we think that God is just up in the clouds and that uh, he doesn't walk among us but I believe that God interrupts time and space and walks and talks with us and lets us know that it's going to be all right amen and every once in a while he'll touch us amen with his power and we praise God whenever we know that we are in the presence of the Lord that's certainly a time for worship and praise amen we appreciate um, uh, this wonderful um, epic I don't know what you call it. Uh, he called it a musical, so we'll, we'll go with musical, amen. 
and we look forward to all uh, faith deliverance. It won't be here. It will be at Mount Carmel Church of God in Christ. So uh, go online and um, order your tickets right now, free tickets, amen. And uh, we're just looking forward to that entire weekend. Appreciate us, uh, Christine, uh, bringing up the sick and shut in. We are uh, certainly lifting everyone up in pray prayer. Um, it is good to see Mother Melba Carter with us this morning. Amen. God bless you, Mother Carter. Amen. She's been battling and she's been fighting. Amen. But you know what? She's winning. Amen. She's winning. She's winning. Amen. And even when she's not here in in her in uh, her present form, amen, she is watching online. She is on the prayer line. Amen. We praise God for her. Amen. I always call her one of the real ones. Amen. She's a real one. Amen. And uh, Elder Todd was correct. Uh, when we come out victorious, does not mean that we won't have any battle scars to prove it. Amen. You're going you're gonna to have some battle scars if we are in a fight. If we are, in fact, in a fight, we are going to all have some scars. Amen. And, and some scars will never go away. You can put uh, cocoa butter on it, and you can even put olive oil on it. Amen. It'll smooth it out a little bit, but if you look at it, somebody see you, they can tell that you've been through something. That's all right, because that defines our character. Amen. Our scars, amen, are the embodiment of, amen, our victories. Amen. Amen. You can't have... It, it will preach. Amen. And I said it first. Let me preach it first, and then you can quote me. Amen. <laughs> oh, I know how this works. I know how this works. I call dibs on that one. <laughs> Amen. But you can't go through this life, and you can't have the victory without having some scars to prove it. Amen. We'll preach that at a later time and a later date. We thank God for everyone that has been supporting this ministry. Amen. Your gifts and your, of your resources are not uh, going un unnoticed. We thank you for the ones who have dropped them off or mailed them in, we have received them, amen. And for those of you that are paying online or that are giving online, we appreciate you that are giving via um, our online uh, platforms. We thank you for that, amen. And uh, for those that are here today, you can give before, uh, we, before you leave, amen. We have baskets on both sides. We have our credit card machine available to you amen, for you to be able to give. It amazes me that we live in a day where you can actually give, amen, uh, where you can actually give uh, on a credit card. It used to be taboo. I said it used to be taboo, amen, but uh, now we, are, we live in a cashless society, amen, and so you can give right there at the credit card machine, or you can drop your uh, offerings on your gifts out off right there in the baskets before um, you leave. Amen. Uh, we praise God for Mother Mother Carr. Is that you over there? Lord Jesus, come on, put your hands together. Amen. <laughs> Mother Carr has some scars to prove that God is a good God, and God has healed her. God is healing her, not completely. Amen. It's a work in progress. We praise God for you uh, coming out to church. You another real one. Amen. We appreciate the real, one, real ones. But the car always lets me know where she is. When she's not here, I always know where she is. Amen. And I, I appreciate saints uh, that uh, still hold on to the old traditions. Amen. I'm not going to get in too far in that, but we appreciate uh, you, and we're continuing to lift you up and praying for you. Amen. Uh, for you to for your complete healing somebody say complete healing complete healing amen I speak complete healing over this entire body some of us don't have physical scars but we have emotional scars Amen. We have emotional scars that go back decades, amen, and years and months. And we have scars in our mind and in our heart. But God is a God that can revive us and restore us. God is a God that can heal us and deliver us. 
amen, of all of our afflictions. And for that, we give God all the praise and all the glory. Amen. It's time for the word of God. I would that you would uh, go to the book of uh, Psalms, the 45th chapter. Amen. The oil of gladness. Right after the uh, sermonic selection by our choir, uh, we'll see a short video and then we'll be into the word of God.
My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Your love, righteousness, and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and alloys and cassia from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in the gold of Ophrah. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people at your father's house. Let the king be endowed by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth who seek your favor. All glorious as the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she's led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her. Those brought to be with her. Led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Psalm 45, verse number 7. King James Version, thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And today we want to talk to you from this thought, the oil of gladness. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. God bless you all this morning. You may be seated. God bless you. And thank you, ushers. Amen. Our we appreciate our audio-visual team, amen, doing a wonderful job, and amen. Thank God for this choir, amen, this praise and worship and music team that set the, set the atmosphere, amen, and allowed the Holy Spirit to move this morning. The oil of gladness. Um, my um, big idea is simply this. Without the anointing, there can be no joy. Without the anointing, there can be no joy. Continuing on in this third uh, series, this lectionary series of this year, which, amen, is entitled The Joy of Resurrection. The Joy of Resurrection. And our focus on this lectionary series will be to continue to contemplate just how joy impacts the Easter narrative not just on Resurrection Day, but throughout the entirety of the journey to the cross. As I mentioned, most of our selected pericopes um, will be from the book of Psalms. Today is, amen, a reading um, from the Psalm number 45, which is a wedding song um, sung by the songs or written by the sons of Korah. It is, in fact, a love song. This pericope was composed by the sons of Korah, uh, written to a king on the day of his marriage. It's one of the royal, royal psalms. The sons of Korah uh, were the descendants of Moses' cousin, Korah. And when you read the text, you immediately notice its poetic prose. That video showed how um, it, was, it was presented in the form of poetry. And um, as we observe this particular psalm, um, we understand that it itself is one of the greatest poetic psalms 
and not only songs, but content within all of Holy Scripture. When we look at this one, Psalm 45, we should look at it the same way that we look at um, any other historical text. We see its historical value, referring to an ancient king, some say perhaps even King David. And we have uh, also seen it from a Christological perspective. Specifically, it is quoted by the Hebrew writer over in Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9. The Hebrew writer seems to interpret and quote this psalm as messianic prophecy. And it alludes to Jesus as both the future king and a bridegroom of the church. Furthermore, as it relates to the Christological aspect of this text, it shines light on the Easter narrative as we now see a resurrected Christ in all of Christ's splendor, married now to his bride, the church. Let's take a deeper look into this poem to the king. Verses 1 and 2, the poet described the characteristic of the Davidic dynasty, as well as that of the messianic king who is to come as part of the second advent. And as he considers the magnificence of the occasion, the writer, the poet, is inspired to pen this poetic masterpiece. He says, Lord, you are the most excellent of men. The king is excellent in all of his ways. The way that he carried himself, the, the way that he concerned himself with the welfare of the kingdom and the welfare of the people in the kingdom. And as we are children of the king, we must stay, watch this, in the mindset of royalty. You need to act like your royalty. You need to move like your royalty. You need to talk like your royalty. You may not have but a 50 cent in your pocket, but act like you got 50 million in the bank. Uh, in 2009, our theme was Lifestyles of the Royal Priesthood. Do you need, does anybody remember that? Um, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's First Peter 2 and 9. I preached during that series a sermon um, entitled um, The Royal Attributes. And that actually was a series, actually. And that series focused on such virtues as humility, honor, courage, justice. Sometimes, watch this, the children of royalty take on the spirit of entitlement. And so we must always remember that pride comes before destruction. And high-mindedness comes before a fall. Thank you, Jesus. The king's speech is wise. When the king spoke, everybody listened. His words were seasoned with grace. And when we walk in our royal calling, we have to be mindful of the words that we say. I was sharing with a colleague the other day that I consider myself a patient man. Uh, 
I've got, I got a couple of hus up in here. Hmm. Hmm. I rebuke that spirit. Let me, let me. We had such a sweet spirit right up until that moment in time. And, 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 and y'all, now rebuke. We're going to get right back on this, tra this train. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I'm a patient man. Oh, you're going to learn some patience if you're going to walk with Jesus. You're going to learn, if you're not patient, you're going to learn how to be patient. Even if you don't want to be, God will make sure that you are patient. I'm a patient man. I was trained by my father uh, to measure twice and sometimes even more before you cut. Because I have learned that communication is not always in what I say, but rather what my audience hears. And here it is, here it is, brothers and sisters. We have to learn to measure our words so that the words that we say, juxtaposed with what someone hears, are aligned with one another. It's important that you hear what I say based on the intent of my heart. So it's not always just what I say. Sometimes it's how I say. And, and, and when you consider how you say something, that nuances the, the line of communication between you and the person that is listening. Hear me this morning. The poet also realized that there would be times when words alone would not maintain the kingdom. See, we pacum parabellum. Uh huh. See, we parcum parabellum. While the king was a man that was full of grace. He was one that was full of splendor. I'm going somewhere with it. He also knew that there were times when he would have to wage war upon his enemies. See, we pacum parabellum simply means if you want peace, then you need to prepare for war. I've learned the hard way, brothers and sisters, and I wish y'all would talk with me and walk with me. Sometimes if I need peace, I have to, I have to set the atmosphere for peace. And if, if, you, if you're trying to steal my peace, then I need to deal with you so that I can lay down at nighttime and get some sleep. Sometimes that might mean you want to tell some folks you're going to get up off of me. <laughs> and you're going to do it right. Because listen, the king realized that his enemies wanted what he possessed. And so he had to make them recognize his authority. And you already know that there are people in your life that want what you possess. They see your gifts, and they want your gifts. They see your um, title, and they want your title. They see the power that you wield, and they want what you have. Um, and I, I tell people all the time, <laughs> you don't want to be me. <laughs> you don't want to be me. You don't want to know what I've gone through to get to where I am right now. Good God Almighty, Lord have mercy. Touch my mind and touch these lips today. Ah, uh, They want what you possess. And I've learned in my life that sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, I have to fight in order to have peace. And sometimes we may have to fight on behalf of truth. Sometimes we may have to fight on behalf of humility. Uh, sometimes you might have to fight. I'm not ready to go there. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Uh. Uh. 
You might have to fight on behalf of righteousness. Because the enemy, the enemy, the enemy will try to sow seeds of discord in your life. And if you don't learn that then, you need to learn it now. There will be times that you need to cut them off before they gain any ground. You're going to have to make your enemy recognize your authority. Which I, I wish I could say that again. I said you're going to have to make your enemy recognize your authority. Listen, you ain't got to like me, but you will respect me. We don't have to be bosom buddies. We ain't even got to go out for lunch. But you're going to respect the authority that I have. I told my son, yeah, it was true. I told him you need to walk. I told both of them, y'all need to walk like you're the boss. You need to act like you're the boss. You need to look like you're the boss. Amen. You need to sign your name on a piece of paper like you're the boss. Sign it in a little script. I started signing mine as a scribble because that's the way all the bosses sign their name. Even, 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 even when I was in uh, high school, I was decked out every day. Asked my mom, I wore, I didn't wear jeans, I wore slacks. I wore ties, I wore, I wore a suit, uh, sport jackets, and uh, I wore um, Argyle vests, and Argyle, I looked, and I carried a briefcase to school, in high school. I know I don't mess somebody up, but listen, I wanted them to respect who I was. And wherever I walked, amen, I wanted them to think, Lord, is that a student or is that a teacher? Uh, we were still kids, and they called me GQ Johnson. And even to this day, some of my classmates will see me, and they'll say, GQ. You have to make your enemy and everybody else around you respect and recognize your authority. Uh, in verse 6, after the smoke clears, the poet said this, Thy throne... O oh God, is forever and ever. Lord, have mercy. Oh, God. Fr from the time of David to the time of Jesus Christ, from the time of the resurrection to the time of the second advent, the throne of God has transcended time and space. And just as David and his descendants sat on the throne of, from generation to generation, so now King Jesus sits on the throne of God. Jesus was a descendant of David, but he now sits on the heavenly throne on the right hand of God the Father. But there's more. Lord, have mercy. Help me through this one. I've always enjoyed those elements and those times in Holy Scripture when I recognize God speaking to God. It, it, it makes me feel all right. It makes me feel some kind of way because I often talk to myself too. Sometimes self has to speak to self. Sometimes you got to call yourself before somebody else calls you. Sometimes you have to admonish yourself before somebody else admonishes you. Sometimes you need to check yourself. And sometimes you need to inspire yourself. In other words, you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Mm. And we see the model for self-talking to self. Uh, when we recognize those moments with when God talks to God. And this is where the Christological value of the text comes forth. The Hebrew writer says over in um, for, or Hebrews 8, 1 and, 9, 1 and 8, but unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever 
endeavor. And the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, the Hebrew writer adds the text of these words. But unto the son he saith. So who is the he? To whom the Hebrew writer is referring. The he is God. So another way to understand the text is like this. But unto the Son of God, unto God the Son, God the Father says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. I'm going to need to say it again. Did you catch it? But unto God the Son, God the Father says, Thy throne, O God. Um, it is God speaking to God. Uh, and here's where it really begins to blow my mind. Uh, then God the Father anoints God the Son with the oil of gladness. God anoints God. God speaks to God. God encourages God. And then God anoints God. Sometimes you got to speak to yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. And sometimes you got to grab the oil and anoint yourself. To anoint in its basic sense means to smear. Typically, it is used in the context of smearing with oil as an act of consecration. Mm, yeah. Now, the implication is that the, as the substance is smeared or rubbed in, then the essence or the extract or the good stuff of whatever has been smeared will begin to infiltrate whatever it was smeared or rubbed on. Oh, God. And it is smeared on you and is rubbed on you in order to change the complexity of the object on which it was smeared. In other words, I, I had cold chills the other night running through my body. And then I anointed or smeared on some Vicks into my chest. And whatever was in the Vicks began to infiltrate the pores of my body. And it changed, oh God, and it changed, it changed me. So when I woke up, I felt better than what I did when I went to bed. Ah, uh, the sore throat was gone. The cough was gone. The fever was gone. Because I anointed myself. Y'all used to say, the old saint said, I anointed myself. The anointing is a figurative and it is used figuratively of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is smeared upon us. Thus, the complexity of our countenance begins to change when the Holy Spirit is smeared upon us. How many of y'all know today that without the anointing, there can be no joy? And not only that, but... Without the anointing, there can be no change in us. Oh, Jesus. Lord, may the Lord watch you. May the Lord watch. God bless y'all. <laughs> y'all been, been riding with me today. I appreciate you. I just want to let you know that the anointing is the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. The second person in the triune Godhead. The Holy Ghost, which is embodying and, and abiding within us. The Holy Ghost, which is empowering us to do that which we couldn't do ourselves. I can hear, I can hear Isaiah said, and he prophesied to the remnant of Israel. He said to Israel these words, It shall come to pass on that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder, and his yoke will be taken away from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil uh, uh, oh, oh, mm, 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 mm. 
Okay. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. As I'm on my way to the communion table, Dr. Smith, I want to remind you that without the anointing, there can be no joy. Somebody ought to lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, smear me with the oil of gladness. I said, lift your hands and say, Lord, smear me with the oil of gladness. Oh, hey, hey, God. The anointing of God destroys the yoke of sin. Uh, see, when God smears you, when God smears you with the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost, nobody can stand within this power. Nobody can stand or withstand the power of the Holy Ghost. And right now, uh, maybe there's somebody that's here today that the enemy is trying to intimidate. But you got to remember the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When God anoints you, hey, demons will flee. When God anoints you, your enemy will be subject to your authority. When, when God uh, anoints you, I like that key, the yoke will be destroyed. I wish somebody would lift their hands again and say, Lord, Lord, send your anointing. Lord, send your anointing and destroy the yoke in my life. Lord, set me free from the sin that's in my life. Lord, Lord, oh, oh, give me back my joy. I said, Lord, give me back my joy. Lord, give me back my peace. Lord, smear me. Smear my head, Lord. Smear my heart, Lord. Smear my mind, Lord, until I get happy on the inside. Smear me until my disposition changes. Smear me until I get a smile on my face. Uh, somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, smear me today. Y'all just seen that song that I will enter his case with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court. And I will say this is today. I will say that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. One more time from the top. I will Is the day. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Come on. He has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice. Rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody said, Lord, smear me. Smear me, Lord. Lord, touch me. Touch me, Lord. Lord, anoint me. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me right now. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint my spirit, God. Yes, God. Anoint my mind, Lord. Anoint my mind. Anoint my house, Lord. Anoint my house. 
Anoint my family, Lord. Yeah. Anoint my finances, God. Lord. Yeah. to jump to your feet and say, Lord, anoint me today. Touch my mind. I refuse to leave here the same way I came. I refuse to leave here the same way I came. Oh, oh, oh. God, I dare you to get out in the aisle and begin to wave those hands and say, Lord, anoint me today. Lord, anoint me today. Lord, anoint me today, God. Anoint my mind right now. Just wave those hands and say, Lord, anoint me today, God. Yeah. can be no joy without the anointing. Ah, there can be no joy unless God anoints you and smears you with his power. You can't have your joy back unless God touches your mind. You can't have joy until God changes your heart. You can't have joy until God, God motivates your spirit. Ah, oh, Jesus. All right, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. I see folks jumping all around here. Somebody just give God a praise. About 30 more seconds. Come on, let's go. Thank you. 
other part. What's that other part to it? The little part to it. That's it. Sweet Holy Spirit. There we go. Sweet gentle dove. Uh-huh. Sweet. this part. Let your heart say yeah. Yes. Church say yes, 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 yes. The book. second chapter as we prepare our hearts and minds to partake in the Eucharist the Holy Communion this does not bring us to a place of salvation but it does we do is we celebrate this because we are our saved the Lord has already saved us yes God yes God and we do this in the right spirit in a manner that is pleasing to God, our holy King. Let us hear the word of God at this time. And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entering into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he's entered in. One more time. Anointing fall on me. Good God Almighty, the Lord is here this morning. Let the power of the Holy 
follow me. Just say unto the good men of the house, the master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there make ready. And they went and found as he said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take it and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ.
brothers and sisters around the table, we have the elements, we have the bread of life, we have the fruit of the vine. Take now and eat the bread of life. Many grains are formed into a loaf, which is then baked in an oven. And it comes out as something that is edible for our souls. We take this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has remind us, reminded us that we, in fact, are that loaf. We are now the bread. Now take the other element, which is the fruit of the vine. Drink ye all of it. This represents the blood, the blood, the currency of our Savior, Jesus Christ. His blood was the currency that bought our salvation. And without the blood, there is no salvation. Let us prepare as everyone has their own elements in their hands at this time. Before we do that, we're going to have the Lord's Prayer. Two elements you have in your hand. Take now and eat ye all of it. This is the bread of life. It represents the body of our Savior Jesus Christ. He gave his life for us so that we may have eternal life. Now you have on the other side the fruit of the vine. Take ye and drink ye all of it. This we do in remembrance of him. As often we do this, we do show forth the death and the suffering of our Savior till he comes. Let us rest on our feet all over the sanctuary. Eternal Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship with you. 
pray, Lord, that this service was pleasing to you as our audience of one. We take down this Holy Eucharist to remind us of the relationship that we have with you. Today, God, we ask you, Lord, as we came to worship, to help us as we leave this place to serve in your name, we pray. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. You are just missed. Amen. We're going out in a single file that out the far door. Amen. God bless you. You are adjourned.